All right. Welcome to another live episode of Action Summit with Dub. We have here a very special guest, Tony. Uh, you've been with us for, for a while, man. We, we love your stories. We love your energy. And uh, tell us, for the, for the viewers that are brand new, haven't met you yet, tell us about Tony. Um, so lifelong martial artist, uh, teaching self-defense, uh, and, and my, just, just some backstory because, because of the dub platform, uh, I needed a way to, to reach people around the world. Uh, and, and I think I've been with you since uh, about a year before the whole, all the lockdown stuff. So I was starting to get in place with that. Uh, our, our, our approach to, to personal safety and self-defense is, um, it's very cerebral, a lot of psychology, a lot of neurobiology, and that language like that can be very daunting in an email. So the ability to, you know, someone get a, like an email from the founder and the researcher, and it was way easier for me, like in typing, uh, like I enjoy talking and coaching. This is coaching. Coaching is my, it's like a, a, a the canvas for the, for the painter. So I loved the, um, the app and and the usability with the email and and that's how stuff came together and then found out after uh you know uh founder ruben really into martial arts so we would have all these like offline conversations where i was going to try and you know pick his brain about dub and we'd talk about bruce lee and jeet Kune Do for hours and then never talk about business and and i, I think you've got a, a, a pugilistic background boxing and stuff like that so um uh, but people really don't want to hear about that. I, I've been in business for for 43 years. I'm 61 years old right now, uh, and so I was I was around doing stuff when you had to write letters, right? And like lick an envelope, and if you wanted to write an editor, a, a letter to Black Belt Magazine, man, you know I had to write it, go to the post box, and, and mail it. There was no email and 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 stuff like that. So this is all. Uh, pretty exciting and, and fascinating to me and then became a huge, huge pivot and asset, of course, you know, a couple of years ago when, when the pandemic locked everyone up. Nice, man. Thanks for that intro. Yeah. So FYI, Tony knows what he's talking about. He's been in the whole growing your business game for, for quite some time here. So the, the experience is very relevant. You know, we have a lot of coaches, consultants, and, and people whose businesses rely on that ability to communicate effectively you know and we're not just we're not selling no no shame to anybody out there but sim simple stuff sometimes it's it takes a communicative process to right. articulate value and benefits to somebody especially the new stuff right that's where we're always trying to prospect and bring in the, the next crop of clients if you will and um, they need to be educated and one of the best ways we can we can do that is with video um, i think uh tony you had a, you had a piece you wanted to share with us on, on mindset actually, right? Because this is one of the biggest problems that, that entrepreneurs face and, and we're not uh, we're not getting any help from external sources, right? Right, and, and that was, you're, you're very uh, carefully dancing around language and buzzwords to so we don't get canceled right in the middle of this. Um, but, and I'll just come out and say it. So, so part of my research uh, decades ago, this is from the 80s, when I was designing a new way to look at self-defense and I, I, I discovered what I now elegantly, uh, and I say, I say that tongue in cheek, I elegantly refer to as the neurobiology of survival because neuroscience has revealed in the last 10, 15 years, very important things about how we learn the amygdala, the limbic system, its relationship, courage and fear, uh, uh, how we train signal speed, uh, through understanding the neuron and, and, and myelin development and all these cool buzzwords that didn't exist in the 80s and 90s when I was putting my program together. As Faye would have it, or I prefer serendipity, uh, all this language explained what I was intuitively figuring out. But the biggest and probably most undervalued uh, component of the research was this accidental discovery of the relationship between the psychology of fear and performance. And I'll, I'll fast forward it quickly to, so that I put it into business sense. But what I discovered in the 80s that the people who managed their fear managed to fight. We would put on these, like before Fight Club was Fight Club, the movie, 
we were doing stuff like that in the 80s and we were videotaping it with vhs cameras if any of you are are older on here you'll know what vhs is some of you won't um you might be borderline dude i don't know if you got good genetics and you're and you're and you're older but um VHS is. yeah yeah <laughs> okay good so but we were doing crazy things and you would see like someone come in he's a boxer or street fighter or a doorman and he'd proverbially proverbially tap out like in a scenario and we were doing jujitsu and sparring these were scenarios it'd be like darius go stand over there uh two role players are going to come up to you they're drunk on the street and remember, you need to morally, ethically, legally de-escalate this. And we'd create a whole, almost like a like a mini play for about a minute before physical shit would kick off. And it was very exciting. It, it, you know, we, we ended up recording a, a six videotapes. I went around the world teaching this stuff. This is before the UFC. It was crazy, man. And, and so I built a whole, uh, like a business empire on that. But the thing that was most exciting that is only really uh, becoming more and more prevalent and relevant now was my research on fear. And I created a program out of that called No Fear, but it's spelled N a K N O W. the idea of leaning into fear and getting to know fear and having fear be our guide and our teacher. Fast forward decades, uh, when the news came out, two weeks to flatten the curve, and that became three weeks and four weeks and five weeks and six weeks. All of my business was live in-person training. Literally within about four to five months, I had canceled 35 courses, which was close to about a half a million dollars in potential revenue. And all of these courses were also linked to other verticals in my company. We have an equipment company and stuff like that. I was sitting in this office, in this chair, like this, like doing the math in my head. And all of a sudden, it was like someone stuck a vacuum cleaner up my ass, man, and was sucking out my insides. I put my head on my hands. I folded over. I thought I was going to throw up because I realized I was going to lose everything that I had built over, over decades. And I could hear my kids running around the house and my dogs. And, and I remember my wife saying, hey, dinner's in 15 minutes. And I'm like, I'm not going to eat. I can't eat. I have no appetite. And I gave myself 24 hours to feel sorry for myself. And I made the joke, I said, you know, too bad you don't know anyone that's been studying the psychology of fear for decades. And I train just for per per perspective, uh, and, and I don't like talking about my background. I don't know if you guys are gonna post my bio, but people go to my website. I work with people who hunt terrorists. I work with with tier one operators all over the world in in, in friendly countries. I work with SWAT teams, and that's been my, my business for decades. We also have a program for the general public. We work with corporations um, as, as big as, as, as uh, FedEx and Sony over the years. And, and uh, during the uh, pandemic, one of the, one of the teams in Google called me uh, to, to do a private custom no fear seminar. And I thought it was a first a friend playing a joke. I mean, a little, little side story here. Because it was like, yeah, I got a message from Google. They're interested in talking to you. And I'm like, I get on the phone with the guy. I think it's a prank. I didn't really like fact check it. And I said, how'd you find me? Did you Google me? You know, and I was like, and he laughed and then said, well, actually, I heard you talking on a podcast. And, you know, but it's, it's just an interesting thing. And now tie this to like, hopefully your audience listening to this. And the title of this was, was, was this idea of how do we choose courage in a world that weaponizes fear? And the world the government is weaponizing fear. We're, we're supposed to be afraid of any of everything. Nobody, there's not one message from the government that said, get some fresh air, go work out, eat good food. Don't live in fear. It's no live in fear and don't do these things, which all, even right now, you can go get weed, you can go get booze, but you can't go work out. Almost everywhere in the world, gyms are closed. What is, what, what is that? Um, the news weaponizes fear. The government weaponizes fear. Now, through osmosis, big fancy word for stuff that seeps into us, through osmosis, we weaponize fear. If you're an entrepreneur, forget the pandemic for a second. 
I guarantee that you at some point in a certain aspect of life, maybe it was your boxing. People are saying, how are you going to do that? You're not very good. I know like, you know, like, oh, you lost your last fight. What are you going to do now? Like, like people don't understand that you need adversity to self-actualize. And, and you need, like, if you don't have an audacious goal, like big buzzwords, what is our audacious goal? Like, if your goal doesn't scare you, and, and I don't like when the gurus say that, because, because that's unconsciously also using fear in, in, the, in the wrong way. But it is, but there's truth to it. I just don't like how ubiquitous, it's just all over the place. It just, it's lost its potency. But this idea... You know, when 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 Dub asked me, hey, you know, would you talk and, and what do you think is important? I mean, there's so many things that are important. I have, I have business groups. I don't like the term mastermind. I don't, I don't even know what that means, but but I get it. Uh, but I've got groups where I'm coaching people on just the idea of, of this connection. And this is so cool that whatever goals you have, your vision, your mission, your goals, as soon as you write them down and they become a little bit real, you probably get a, like a little adrenaline dump, a little like, am I going to go for this? Am I quitting my job and starting this? Am I going to start a side hustle? Am I going to actually borrow money? I'm like, whatever it is you're doing, whatever product or service you're doing, those are that's part of your goals, your mission, your vision. This concept out of our No Fear program, KNOW, this idea that if I can change my relationship with fear, I can change how I relate to anything. And if I can change how I relate to anything, I'm changing my mind. If I change my mind, oh my God, follow the algorithm, I can change my life. And that sounds like all touchy-feely and everything, but it's literally like the neuroscience of creating a habit. As long as you're, as long as you're not rationalizing, right? Rational lie, bullshitting yourself on what do you think is important. So you have your goal and you have you. Here's the, the, the missing part, and this is why there's so much potency in what I do. And I almost sometimes regret introducing myself as a combatives defensive tactics guy because then people like that's the first thing they hear and then they think well i don't need to learn how to fight but fucking business is a fight life is a fight right it's a roller coaster right but the big fight and i'll share i don't know if you ever read the book uh the way of the peaceful warrior by dan millman i don't know if you know the book. great book to read it. but this wasn't in the book but it just the, the author that that's a pretty famous book um but Dan Millman, the author of The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, he wrote, if you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself, you're outnumbered. And when I first understood that and heard that a long time ago, it blew my mind because how many times, whether it's your colleagues, your coworkers, your family, your wife, your girlfriend, I remember was married to this girl years ago, he went, I'm going to open up my own school. I was working for my dad. I'm going to open, I love martial arts, a dream of mine. I'm going to open up my own martial arts school. And she just looked at me and she goes, how are you going to do that? And when she, as soon as she said that, I knew we weren't going to make it. I just knew. And a year later we were divorced. Um, that is self-awareness. So this connection this is kind of heavy and kind of neat. We need good situational awareness to be successful entrepreneurs. Situational awareness is reading the market. Situational awareness is reading your competition, meaning situational awareness is I am situationally aware of what's going on with regard to what's important to me. And again, this is in the context of your product or your service, but it's self-awareness that allows you to clearly uh, access or optimize situational awareness. In other words, if you don't realize that you're suffering from some you know, a, a fear-based relationship with, with money or success or teamwork, or, you know, you've met people that go, I can't, I can't have partners. And that's their whole, well, maybe the only way they're ever going to make it is with a partner. What they mean is they can't have shitty partners, but something happened to them. And this is a, like, this is a great, I lost a $12 million company in 2010 and I got fucked by I mean, it happened so fast, uh, uh, but I lost everything. It took me five years to rebuild. And afterwards, for literally for nine years, if somebody had a business deal with me and they talked, as soon as they started talking equity or shit like that, I went, Phew. I was like, no, we're done. Even though I was smiling, going, but I, 
Self-awareness informs situational awareness. And so you, the fastest way to understand and improve your own self-awareness, which ultimately is our superpower, if you want to self-actualize as a, as, a, as a parent, as a human, you, you need to have good self-awareness because you won't know what you're hiding yourself from, what experience. So this is where this whole no fear program, like right now, like I spent my life 43 years teaching physical self-defense. I always had the psychological, the mindset, but over in the last couple of years, this no fear program has become a standalone vertical in my company. And now I'm doing stuff uh, uh, in some places that we can fly, I'll fly, but doing like Zoom calls like this or, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in connecting with people because people who are, are entrepreneurs are almost right there, right? And here's an interesting thing. And again, I'm, I'm rambling here, uh, which, which is there's so many rabbit holes to go in. But once when your business clicks, you're no longer an entrepreneur. Now you're a CEO or a founder, right? So the entrepreneur is that person who's, who's always like trying to come up with something new. We always have the entrepreneurial spirit. But if you want to really augment and enhance, you need to self-actualize. The only way to do that is through greater self-awareness where you realize Wow, this is not my core competency, or this is not what I really want to do. Um, you know, I just had a meeting with my team today, planning for 2022, and I said, "Guys, this is our vision, this is our mission, and you need to help hold me to it because I'm the entrepreneur with like, well, I got entrepreneurial OCD. I'm like, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and I, but I have enough self awareness to say to my team, hold me accountable. This is our core competency. This is how we want to change the world." But you understand that every week I'm going to go, guys, what do you think about this? Because I'm an entrepreneur and, and I'm relying on you guys to, to help run the company. This is our team. So all of that is built around this no fear, K-N-O-W fear structure where we have uh, the courage. And it's a great line. It's your next tattoo. You can't be brave if you're not afraid. You can't be brave. So a lot of people have a, a negative relationship to fear. It's got a, I make the joke that fear management actually needs good management because when I say, Darius, let's talk about your fear. You're like, no, I'm good. I'm like, because especially guys, especially type A and all entrepreneurs are type A, you know, we'll, 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 you know, someone will either, because marijuana is legal, most of the world, smoke a joint, have a beer, have a glass of wine, have a cigarette, um, and I'm not you, saying it, that's not okay to do after a hard day's work, but there's a lot of people that are doing it because it calms their nerves, but you wouldn't have nerves if you didn't have fear. Some fear is good, some fear isn't, but how do you figure that out? So what I wanted to share was just this idea that it goal, the, the goal part of my, my meaning our business development is our situational awareness. Our self-awareness informs our situational awareness. So if we don't have good self-awareness, we're like, we're always like, it's, we're, you know, it's like the money pit. No, I'm putting more money in this. We, we don't, we can't, we're not objective enough. Self-awareness informs and inspires that objectivity. Um, your self-awareness is your inner coach. And, and um, this all works, but it's an area that's just never talked about. Everything's always time management and planning and structure, accountability, KPI, ROI, you know, and underneath that, we still have people who are uh, PTSD, suicidal, drinking, overweight, not working out, and they're getting in the way of their potential success because of fear. I have a question. What, yes. what is an exercise that someone can do that we can maybe give the viewers to increase self-awareness? something is, is it is a meditation is it is it a thought what's what's something simple i love to give people always one simple thing to, to walk away with yeah well let me so yeah so i meditate quite literally every day i don't own get to bed without doing i do i actually do two to three meditations um before i get out of bed uh one is just because the science of meditating and, and, and everything is there. If, to, if you can, if you say, I don't have 15, 20 minutes to meditate, you got bigger problems than, than, <laughs> than the meditation. Right. Um, so I do like, like, uh, you know, 15 minutes of meditation and then 
depending on if I woke up early, I don't set an alarm clock unless I got to catch a flight. But, you know, like today I was up at five. Uh, so I'll do more because I don't want to get to bed so fast. And, and so I'll do, I'll do more, but I do a minimum of two meditation. And then I, I do deliberate intentional breathing. Very, very important, especially as a guy I'm, I'm for my age, I'm, I'm very fit. Uh, but for, with everything that's going on with respiratory illness, deliberate intentional breathing might actually save your life. And a lot of us just think like, oh, I go for bike rides, I run. That's not the same as working on your breathing. And there's a ton of really good apps that'll teach you how to breathe properly, expand your chest, your back and breathe properly. And and, and I mean, you can't afford not to do this. It's ridiculous. Um, that, But that alone doesn't give you the answers, right? Uh, you know, so that's almost like saying, can meditation and breathing help me achieve my goals? Yeah, but if you don't actually get on your whiteboard and write down shit and go, that's stupid. And, and oh, this is good. Wait a minute. This is traction. So how do you overcome fear? Um, the, 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 I'll, the, I'll, let me share three things real quick. Uh, one, I said it earlier, you can't be brave if you're not afraid. So it's reframing your relationship with fear. Most of us, when we feel any element of fear, actually back away. And that's a normal, uh, uh, almost uh, uh, human response to, oh, there's fire, we move away. There's a loud noise, we move away. There's the flinch, we want to move away. At a cellular level, we want to move away. So without it causing harm, don't take this literally, uh, in business, in relationships, in communication, if like if I said to the average person, how fast, is, how how quickly can you apologize when you realize you friggin' made a mistake in a personal relationship in business? Well, most people, mo I would say half people don't, right? They, it's like, yeah, well, you know, shit happens, and like, you know, like, well, didn't you? I thought he did it. We're pointing fingers. We're doing that. Um, it's a hard thing, and I like. I'm a pseudo expert at this. Something will happen with my wife. And I'm like, there's a voice in my head that goes, just go give her a hug right now. Give her a kiss and say, I'm sorry. Let's not fight. And then part of me goes, well, no, she fucked this up. It was her fault. She needs to like, and you're going like, no, shut up. Like it's this battle of ego, of pride, of, of habit. So, but can you have a conversation with that voice? Right. So, so how do you create self-awareness? The, so the secret, the, the superpower for everybody listening here is how do you, how do you improve? What's the fastest way to improve self-awareness? Because that conversation that, that, and, and here, again, when I'm talking to people and helping them through some stuff, they'll go like, I've, I've wanted to say this to my boss or my wife or my kid for like sometimes years imagine holding that in for years i quit you're a fucking shitty boss i hate this job some people like will spend like like the, the the metaphoric seven years at the wrong place because of fear so you can't make these changes until you recognize you're in the fear loop so, so, you know, obviously we have a whole system and program around this that I'm happy to get deeper into, but, but you can't even consider this if your, if your idea about fear is limiting and therefore flawed. So the first, the first big reframe is you can't be brave if you're not afraid. So it's okay for me, let's say I had to say something fucking scary to you and I go, Dude, I'm so scared. I got to tell you something has been on my mind for a long, long time. And I'm fucking, I hope this doesn't affect our relationship. And da, 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 da. And you're like, dude, fuck, we have, maybe we have a fight. Maybe we hug, maybe whatever it is, but now it's out. And what happens when you have that conversation? You're like, oh my God, I feel so much better. I make this joke. What is the way to fear? When you get good, no, good news, people yelp and they jump. Oh my God. Medical news, financial news. Hey, your loan was approved. Yes. Hey, doctor's test came back. You're going to be fine. Yes. Right. She said, yes. He said, yes. So like, again, what is the way to fear? Fear is fucking oppressive. Now, 
if I change my relationship with fear in certain areas, fear can now be moved from this anxiety to a fuel that I use. In this metaphor, my body, right? My body's the car, my mind, my goals, my vision. That's my nav system. And in this metaphor, and, and let's not be contrarian and go, what about Tesla and electric cars? In the metaphor, we're using fossil fuel, guys, okay? In the metaphor here, my fuel to grow my family and grow my business is fear. Let's do this. Well, I want better for my family. What are we going to do? I want better for my company. What are we going to do? We're going to stay the course and do it the old way? No, the world's changing, you know? So um, one is, is uh, you can't be brave if you're not afraid. You got to lean into fear, which means y- you've got to move outside your comfort zone. Like one of my meetings today with one of my team in the UK, we're looking at a new app and I go, look, man, I've had apps for 10 years and blown money on them because nobody uses them. And uh, so I've got fear about investing in a new one. And he's very, very clear. He said, you just need to make it SOP and you can't let people not use the app. You just got to, you got to make that happen. Otherwise, and it's, it's such an obvious answer, but it was my self-awareness that said, otherwise I'd be, I'm the CEO that goes, uh, yes, yeah, Steven wants to know if we're, if we're investing in that other app. Yeah. Tell him I'll get back to him next week. You know, I'm just keep pushing it off as opposed to, okay, this is my fear about a new app that you want to bring into the company. So self-awareness, and this is a very cool one. And I think everyone listening to this, uh, will relate to this. What is the only resource that we can't regenerate? Our most valuable, important resource, time, right? Good fear management is time management. The longer you're in the fear loop, the longer you're wasting time. E- example, Stephen says, I like this app. I tested it out. I had a thing. The licenses are this much. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to spend another $1,000 a year for licenses and and so I blow it off or I go, wait a minute. And it's not a big deal. It's not like, like, like it's not a, like a, like a, a catastrophic change in the company, but every one of those represents a time suck, a delay. And so here's the, here's the language again, time management and fear management are connected. If I manage any fear I have, I accelerate decision-making. So think about this. Any fear spike creates doubt. Doubt always creates hesitation. Now the, now the clock is ticking. Hesitation creates procrastination. And if it's unchecked, meaning if, you're, if your own self-awareness, regu- like, like regulatory system of going, wait a minute, why did I bite my lip there? Why did I hesitate? Why did I get that, that butterfly feeling when he said that? If I can't kind of lean into that and assess that, have a conversation with myself and then whoever, I'm eating, I'm in what we call the fear loop. So doubt creates hesitation, hesitation creates procrastination, procrastination creates uh, uh, fixation. And now I'm sure you've had people that you've hired and fired where they said, yeah, we'll get this done. And then they missed their deadline. And then when when you're talking to them, they're like, well, this happened, we had a delay and you realize They don't know what they're doing, but they didn't have the self-awareness to say to you like two weeks earlier, hey, man, I've run into a roadblock. I'm stuck. And so communication is everything, but people who don't have self-awareness and don't understand fear management can't communicate clearly. How would that change all our lives if all of us just all of a sudden understood we all had like like a, a, a policy and a principle based on KNOW fear that it's it's okay to talk about fear in sales, in business, in objectives, in KPIs, in, in, in all of that stuff. So those are the three big ones is, is uh, you know, fear management equals time management. That leaning into fear is the fastest way to create better self-awareness and self-awareness informs situational awareness. You can't be brave if you're not afraid. And the people who manage to fight, and the fight here, don't think about it as, you know, boxing or martial arts. The fight is... I got to get up today and I got to battle the news. I got to, I've got to lead my team. I've got to battle the market. I've got to battle self-doubt. 
And and all of that is normal. Life is a fucking roller coaster, right? So you just gotta you just gotta go. Okay, yeah, I didn't expect that, but I just got hit with a gut shot. Okay, I'm getting back up. That's awesome, man. No, I, I the, the self awareness piece. I, I really appreciate that too. It's like as I grow in my career, you know, in our company, the, the self awareness piece comes back. It comes to those moments when you're like, well, what, that that feeling, that doubt, that fear, and and the tendency to avoid it, you know, the tendency to say, oh, I, that makes me feel this way. I'm going to go back over here <laughs> to safety. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that that I've learned something here, you know, like this new year coming up, I want to, I want to take those moments any, any time that I, that I feel that uncertainty, that I feel that little twinge that I'm like, okay, why do I feel that? Let's, let's be aware of that and, and address that. So, cause I know it's happened. I can't think of a specific example, but I, but I know it's happened recently and I'm like, okay, well, how do I, be, you know, be about that, prevent it from happening. So I don't, I don't, well, know and, I do. and, 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 and one last thing, just, just on a, on a personal note with what you said, there are, there are times when you get a fear spike, right? You get a stimulus. Yeah. It's an email. It's a call from the bank. It's a call from uh, something changes in the market. Uh, uh, the, the Apple changes something dramatically that impacts dubs functionality right. You can have a fear spike, but the the longer everyone's going, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You're not doing anything. Yeah. So that's the whole thing is leaning into fear, and that's how it creates the the solutions and giving everybody the. We are more creative uh, when 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 we embrace that that fear. That's what all when you look at extreme sports and the flow states these athletes have. It's because of the danger. They can't, you couldn't operate as an extreme athlete thinking your way through some of the stuff. You just got to let that go. So, so it's the same thing in business and the same thing in life is sometimes, sometimes you got to go in there, but the only caveat, the only thing I would, I would remind people, cause I don't like the expression, do something that scares you every day. I like, I get the, I get what the, I get what the meme means, but you know what's scary is also like jumping into a pit of, of snakes. What's scary is like running across the street without looking both ways. Um, so there's a lot of dangerous things that you shouldn't do. Right. So what I talk about is like when you get a fear spike, when I say lean into it, what I mean is also study it, yeah. research it, you know, and it, and it would be the type of thing where, where, you know, you know me, you know, we've talked uh, many times and, and way longer than 15, 20 minutes and stuff. I, I hope you feel like if something happened in your personal life and and I popped into your head as an expert that might have an answer, that you would feel good to call me and go, hey, dude, I hate to bug you, but this happened. Yeah. And I'm thinking about this. And that's what I mean by like the fear spike doesn't necessarily mean you're like cowering. It could, yeah. it's, just, it's a moment of where you're, you, and for everyone listening, a fear spike, doubt creates hesitation, hesitation creates procrastination. So I get an email as a, a hypothetical example. I get this email and I, I, I look at it and it stops me in my track. It's, it's rude. It's disparaging. It's threatening. You know, we've all gotten one or two in our life, but you sit there and you're like, that's a fear spike. I'm not going, Oh, I don't know what to do, but it's like motherfucker. And I start, <laughs> and then I start, wait a minute. Um, should I send this to my lawyer? Should I show this to my wife? Should I bounce this off my best friend? Uh, you know, so I look at it and, and what's this about and who's it from? And, and I've done over the years, the example I gave where I, you know, I said, Hey, would, you know, would you call me or text me if you had a problem where you went Tony's Tony's life work, we'll have an answer to this where it creates a discussion. And what you do when you do that is you're leaning into fear because you're not avoiding the problem. Yeah. Remember when you avoid the problem, because our, our psychological relationship with fear is to like, I'm not even going to look at this. Here, yeah. I got this email from the government. Let's pretend I didn't get it. I got this email from the bank. Let's, you know, so uh, f managing fear helps you manage time. And, and time is the only resource we can't get back. That's how potent this is. All right. Well, that, that's my takeaway, some fear management stuff. I, I uh, like, I, I, you know, it's so relevant, too, as, as we're coming up to this new year. A lot of us are 
hopefully going to take some of those approaches and, and get into those situations that where maybe we're afraid of, of some uncomfortable uncomfortableness and uh, manage that fear, right? You use some tools to manage the fear as a, as a motivation versus shying away from your potential and your growth. Yeah. Situation. Listen, the, 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 there's, if you're in business and you have a family, which I'm assuming anyone listening to your, your event is in business and has or doesn't have a family, right. like you're going to have fear. It's part of life. You can't not, right? It's, it's, it's part of life. And there's always like the Dan Millman quote, if you face just one opponent, you doubt yourself. The, the first opponent is achieving your goal. And there's like various little battles to win that war. You know, so you go, I'm going to invent this new thing. Well, you know, you, like everything from market share to funding to partners to all of those things are little micro micro battles in there. Um, you're supposed to have fear, but you'll get things done faster if you lean into that. So, you know, uh, you know, like everybody moving into 2022 and I'm not, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a new year's resolution guy. Uh, like every day I try to become a better version of myself. I'm not going to do anything on January 1st that I didn't do, you know, the day before. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and, and if you want to be successful, if you're still listening to this interview and you want to be successful, that's how you need to operate. You don't, you don't wait for a day. Yeah, yeah. Well, in six months, I'm going to change this thing. Yeah. No, right. now, we were just talking about that. That's being stuck in this loop and you have an excuse to get out of it at some point. Right. Uh, face, face it today. Uh, exactly. For me, yeah, it's, it's just a new quarter. That, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's okay to go. You know, yeah. the, the world does work on a 24-hour clock, and and we all agree to a certain date. And and, right. and and so it's okay to have goals and stuff like that. But you personally, as an operator, you know, uh, take care of yourself, mind, body, spirit. But but I, I promise all of you, uh, if you if you learn to manage your fear, you'll learn to manage any fight. You'll figure out because you can't, you can have physical skills. There's a lot of people that graduated Harvard and Stanford and that are, aren't successful at business, that aren't successful at life. And I guarantee if you peel the onion that the, the greatest obstacle was their, their self-confidence uh, and their, i.e. their ability to manage their fear. Um, and in a world, the come back to full circle, the, the title of the course is, is, you know, how do you choose courage in a world that weaponizes fears to, is to remember fears all around us. There's no way it hasn't stained your brain in some way. And so the, but the only way to, to detox is to develop your self-awareness and go, wait a minute, I am fucking scared of this. Right. Uh, and, and it doesn't, and it can be, it can be, it can be other things, you know, uh, but it's it's a really cool principle, and it's it's changing a lot of lives. I had a I had a um, a guy. He's got a really cool podcast called The Secure Dad, and it's a podcast on on, on dads making sure their family's safe. Everything from identity theft to to house alarms to all. Yeah. He had me on a few years ago, and I've got a, a pro, you know a digital program called No Fear K N O W. Again, if you Google it, and I actually um, have the link there. I want to make sure it's at nofearnow.com. Yeah, yeah, you can go, you can go the there. Link is in the in the comments there. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, and we've got a free ebook uh, that nice. that I'll get you to link to, and we can pop that in there. Um, uh, the um, but I have a, uh, an ebook that I wrote called "Making Friends with Fear," and it's free. And obviously, it'll it'll if you if you don't if you don't if you don't know that it's going to stick you in my funnel, and I'm going to try and sell you more right, shit obviously, than, than, obviously than, what you, than what are you even doing here if you didn't guess that but right. listen the <laughs> ebook is the ebook is free and it and it and it, and it you might have a light go on in your head and that's and that's all um but but this guy who had me on this podcast the secure dad he he gets the no fear program and then he um he messages me a week later he said hey man i i i've never really talked about this with anybody but i've had mild anxiety for years and i think everyone does to a, with something right. in their life i'm worried about 
you know, I've got three kids. How are they going to turn out? I, I, you know, you know, uh, I, whatever. Oh, I'm in a rocky spell with my wife. Or, you know, what's yeah. what's that? And and depending on how much you think about it, like over fixation and your inability to communicate can create a non-clinical anxiety where you're worried. It's called worry, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh my God, I suffer from worry. Well, every fucking human does, right? <laughs> so. He says to me in this text, I should pull it up, but but he says to me, um, I listened to your program five times. I made pages of notes. He says, I, I, is it possible? But I think my anxiety has gone. And I answered him back right away. I said, well, if I was your therapist, then the answer is no, because I need to see you next week. Right. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm, still paying, week, off my, I'm week. still paying off my country house. Yeah. And, and let me say that because there may be a bunch of therapists on here who just got offended by that. Right. Um, uh, I was making a joke. We yeah, actually, right. our, yeah. our, our program, our program actually is used by professional therapists to help vets with PTSD. The, the, the baseline, our cycle behavior is actually used professionally. Uh, we have a, a program for mental health uh, that, that uses this for de-escalation in in in, uh, in behavioral uh, uh, health issues. So so I'm not making fun, but it was a joke I made them because what I meant by it it was this: is that you might not you might need to hear just one thing, and you're going, "Oh my God, that's what I do!" And you now you can catch yourself. That's the self awareness piece. So, oh, hopefully, well, some of you will check it out. Yeah. Just one one message, one time, exactly. It can happen. That one light bulb moment. You don't need to have a continuation forever. Some all, all for it, right? You want to do whatever you want every week, do it. But if there's a moment where you can have that one one event, one message that, that kind of triggers something for you. So happens all the time. Love it for sight. Yourself. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Tony, for your time today. Sure, thank you. Thank from, you. From my family to yours. And then uh, we'll, we'll share the links here, nofearnow.com. Um, also, check out the ebook. We'll, we'll probably post those in the, the link in the follow up here. So, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll send you that. I, I could actually. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, if you have it, if you have it here, post it real quick and we'll, we'll pop, pop it in because while we're in the stream, it'll uh, update all the links at once. There you go. Right. Did that, did that come through? It was in the private right. chat. Yeah. Okay, do, there we go. Here we go. And here it is. I can do guys. it in the so comments. This is the ebook for free. You're going to get value of this. Obviously, it's a um, lead magnet, but there's going to be something there. Have that moment. Read it. Oh damn! I, I didn't realize we were we were uh, we were live here. Oh yeah, buddy. Uh, did I did I answer every question? I actually go teach now, guys. So I got I got to get going. Um, but I see this. I, I could have been looking over here at all these these messages. Yeah, yeah I know. All yeah, good. I didn't realize all it was right, live. That, that's cool. Thanks, guys. Okay. See you next time. Take Thanks, care. Tony. Again. Happy Thank holiday. you, guys. I love you. I love your program. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye bye. Bye.